To begin today's show, I'll be joined by my American Medicine Today radio co-host, Ethan Euchre. Thanks, Kimberly. Today we'll visit with Dr. Christopher Sacules at Sindaver Labs in Tampa, Florida. His company has been featured on many national shows like ABC's Grey's Anatomy, Mythbusters, and recently even on the popular Shark Tank series. Sindaver Labs are looking to bring 500 jobs to the Tampa Bay area and remain the leader in producing these innovative, cost-effective teaching tools. So let's start off with a little bit of your background. How did you get into making synthetic human bodies? Well, my educational background is all engineering. Uh, I got started in the medical device industry and part of the process for developing a device is doing animal studies. So uh, in order to avoid that, we try to develop good models to take their place. I understand that this tissue is actually, it's 85% water. On average it is. We've got about uh, 100, 110 different tissues at this point, and uh, on average they're about 85 percent, yeah. I started to ask you the tissues because I myself have never felt a cadaver or human tissues before. Are these fairly similar? We don't actually try to mimic cadaver tissue because it's dead. Uh, everything that we've developed is based on a live tissue study, right. so it, it more resembles live tissue. This tissue, because it is water-based and mm -hmm. pretty much authentic as far as replicating human tissue, it will sort of decompose and break down, correct? Uh, not so much decompose, but it will dehydrate. If you, uh, if you leave it out and you don't put it back in its container when you're done with it, it can desiccate, which means it'll get crunchy. Now, once it's back in its container, how long could a synthetic cadaver like this last? Oh, it'll last forever. As we stand here, they have a tablet that is showing this, uh, I don't know if you name these synthetic cadavers, but it's showing the vital signs. You can actually hear the heartbeat, and if you look closely, you can see this thing breathing. Now, these are used um, mostly for medical training, correct? Uh, a pretty wide variety of purposes, everything from media to ballistics testing to medical device testing and medical training, yeah. Uh, one of the interesting things is that it can move a little bit. It's a uh, you know, feature that's uh, basically designed to facilitate suspension of disbelief, so if you're working on this and you really don't want the person that's doing the work to just be thinking, you know, this is a dummy, I don't care. Right. So you try to scare them a little bit, <laughs> which we do frequently. And so it can, yeah. it can make some, there's some basic body motions. The, uh, you know, the arms and, and legs will move around. Some of the models will clamp their jaw shut. Some of them can turn their head. Uh, the higher end models will, will blink like this one is. Uh, some of the models actually have dilating pupils. Uh, a, but most of the interesting stuff is, you know, internal body motions, you know, the inflation of the lungs. Um, vasoconstriction is a, a really important feature if you're going through the stages of shock because when you start to experience traumatic blood loss, uh, all, your body tries to push all the blood to your core and this body actually does that. Is this something where once it's cut and sutured, um, it's done or are the parts replaceable? No, it, it's a big jigsaw puzzle. So you damage any one piece and you just replace that one piece. And, and what is the price range of these? Because I know they range from pretty basic models to very intricate models as well. With the educational discounts, the least expensive is 35K. Uh, they go all the way up to over 100. Why don't you just quickly tell us what a scaled down version of the Sindaver would include and then maybe talk about the higher end models. First of all, they're all basically the same superstructure, so they all have uh, all of the muscles and all the bones. Uh, the most basic model is the mortuary science model that omits uh, the organs that are not necessary for, uh, for embalming training, and that's pretty much all it's used for. Uh, the next version up from that is an anatomy trainer that has all of the muscles and bones and organs and vasculature that you would find in normal human anatomy, but it doesn't have skin, usually. Uh, and the vessels are, are solid, they're just for reference, so it's just for teaching people this is this part and that's that part and the way muscles go throughout the body and where the vessels go. Uh, the next version up from that uh, has hollow vasculature and a heart pump, so it's actually pumping blood through it and that's a surgical simulator. Uh, beyond that we have the anime and the patient and that's where we start adding the, uh, the electromechanical bits and the logic that, uh, that allow it to move uh, and breathe and bleed spontaneously and exhibit body temperature and vasoconstriction and shock and all of those sorts of things that, uh, that make it valuable as a you know, procedural simulator uh, that will allow you to train a, a military medic EMT. This is the anatomy version of the SSH. It's basically the same as the one we just saw except it, ha it doesn't have the electromechanicals and it's uh, got solid vasculature. Okay. 
You know, the question that comes to mind, these are so intricate, and I, I thought it was interesting because even the gums, the tongue, everything feels real. So even though this one doesn't move around, it, it is so realistic. How long does it take to build a Sindaver like this? It's about three weeks, start to finish. Are the, the organs inside here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You can take it apart and, you know, instructors use it to, you know, basically tell people what the organs look like uh, so they can learn the names of things, the origins and the insertions of muscles, uh, where the great vessels are, where the nerves are, uh, that sort of stuff, basic anatomy education. Well, why don't you explain what this one is? In, in South America and Mexico and Central America, the island nations, they like to get their anatomy models with skin on. Okay. Uh, because they actually like to do the, the cut down in different spots. Sure. Uh, but on the inside, it looks exactly like uh, the former model. Okay. Uh, and this one is in plastic because it's about to go to Mexico. And do you ever make any of these that have sort of organs that simulate, you know, cirrhosis of the liver or lung disease or, or anything like that that can help in the training process? Mm -hmm. we, uh, we do a whole host of uh, injuries and pathologies. So we can do something as simple as a a stab wound or a, a bullet wound or you know broken bones, uh, coronary plaques, tumors, scar tissue. Uh, if it can be imaged, we can build it. <laughs> oh, how cute. So, so clearly that's a baby, but yeah. why and what is it used for? Yes. Uh, this one is probably used inside of something else. So this would be imaged by ultrasound and we don't bother okay. putting detail in it that's not gonna show up on, on the ultrasound. Now, is this the same type of material, or is this? It's gr it kind of similar, but it's greatly simplified. It's it's designed to do nothing but show up on that on that imaging platform. Yeah. I have to show you guys. This is the baby Sindaver, and it's extremely realistic for like a newborn. How you see the head? Yeah, it needs kind support. Of, yes. There's a spine in there. You were saying? Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Full skull, full spine. Unbelievable. And, and what is this one used for? Uh, this is an airway trainer, so it's uh, for intubation training. And feel how realistic that feels. The vein. Mm -hmm. And it's not even just feel. I mean, this is a, an ultrasound trainer, so you train students to use ultrasound to find the vein and put it in the right spot. And uh, the ultrasound imaging on this is almost exactly like live tissue. When you first got an inkling, hey, let's build a synthetic cadaver because the cost isn't good and, and the fact that the normal cadavers, there's storage fees and disposal fees. How long though did it take from inception to fruition? About 20 years. 20 mm. years. Wow. Unbelievable. And I want to show the camera a close up of this. You said that's a dissected kidney, correct? Correct. And this uh, feature seen in the middle is the renal pelvis and you've got some uh, dissected veins. And what's next on the horizon? What are, I mean, I'm sure you can't tell mm -hmm. us everything that you're working on, but anything that you can tell us that the direction that Sendever's headed. We really don't keep secrets. Um, we're developing, you know, more sizes. Uh, we've got a, a preemie, a newborn, uh, and a, a small child that we're developing, uh, a larger male. Uh, and in addition to those, the detail in the standard platforms is just increasing all the time.